Welcome everyone to another Minecraft tutorial and today we're gonna learn how to build a fully automatic vanilla sorting and smelting system. Before we move on to the tutorial, let me briefly explain you the concept behind my design right here. We have an input chest up here that will basically take care of all the materials that we have sorted out or want to smelt up in any way. In the middle right here we have our sorting system. I only made uh, three examples for demonstration purposes and at the very end we have the furnace system and the coal which gets uh, treated uh, specially. Now, the thing with the furnace is that it will take everything that doesn't have a destination to go to right here in the middle part. So you will need to sort out everything that you intend to throw in this chest and get automatically sorted out or treated in any other way before it goes to the furnace system. So this is mainly intended for the ores. So if you don't have them sorted out, they will automatically queue up and uh, wait for their turn to be cooked up in the furnace. Right, so let's see this bad boy in action. I have already some materials in here from my test before, but we are gonna throw in some redstone and also some gold ores and iron ores. And the redstone of course should be arriving right here, which I think it did, and the emeralds right here. Lapis would be going right here, but the ores are now being picked up, which means the furnace should be going with uh, the gold right now. You can hear the sound in the back, that is the redstone doing some stuff. So let's uh, actually take some coal as well. And right now uh, my machine is full of coal, which means I should be getting some extra coal. And this is uh, the neat mechanism that I have built in so that uh, we try to fill up the system with enough coal at all times but once we get enough it will go towards the excess chest and you can see right now it is going in here rather than in the furnace because we have enough stuff in the furnace. Now you can see the module for the sorting system, it's not too complicated as well as the furnace system. So now that we have seen that let's go and get building this. The first part of the tutorial is going to be dedicated towards the automatic sorting system. And I quickly want to mention this is not my design, it is a design that goes around the wiki and also some other YouTube videos that I've seen. I cannot clearly say who came up with it the first. To understand this module easily, let's try to build the circuitry first. What we need to do is have a shape like this. You could knock out a bunch of blocks if you really wanted to. We are going to place a repeater right here facing towards this direction and a redstone comparator right here. Two pieces of redstone and a torch on the block where the repeater is uh, facing towards. Now what does that do? If we have an inventory adjacent to this comparator, such as a hopper, it will send out a signal depending on how many items are in there. So for instance, if I had this all filled up with a one item, it will send out a signal strength of one. You can see that this one here isn't active yet. But this one here needs to be active in order for the repeater to pick up the signal. So as soon as we have enough items in here, which is actually 19, so you can see 18 still doesn't give a signal, but with the 19th we are going to have a signal strength of 2, which uh, will make this torch shut off. That means we can now simply add another hopper below that, which will interact with the torch and as soon as we have an excess amount of items in here it will be sucked out by the hopper. So let's uh, place a bunch more just so we can see the torch shut off and on again. Now that means this hopper right here on the top will always have the specified item that you specified in there and nothing else will ever be able to come in here because it is all regulated with this redstone circuit. To round this module up we need to place a chest where the items can actually go to and if we want to uh, we can also place another double chest or something like that with a hopper like so. So we have uh, some more space for the materials other than just uh, one single chest. Right, 
So now that we have finished uh, one part of the sorting system, uh, we have done one item, we can simply add all the other items adjacent to it. And that is the very nice things about the uh, comparators, that you can place them like so. The redstone signals will mix up, but the signal strength is uh, at the maximum of two, which means this a uh, comparator can never influence this uh, repeater from the other item, if you get my drift. It can only go or travel one, two, or one, two, but it can never go right here. And that means we can all place them adjacent to each other, no problemo. You can also go around corners and arrange it in any way you want to. So let's make one more together and the rest I'm going to leave up to you. Of course, if you're placing chests next to each other, you need uh, two different kinds, one trapped and one normal chest. Cool. So we're going to place another one of those right here. I did complete the redstone. That is good. We need a hopper that is facing this chest. I'm going to place another double chest right here another hopper right there and we have already finished the second module we only need to define what is going to go in there so in the first one I have stone in the second one we're going to place sand for instance one important thing I forgot to mention is that you need to be careful that the item hoppers you are using to program the sorting system need to be facing uh, either the comparator or uh, an air block or anything else than an inventory such as an item hopper or a chest. Just make sure that they are not facing anything to release what they have inside of them. So now that we have a visual representation of our sorting system, it is time to make our input chest. What we need to do is have a line of hoppers above those guys that will sort out the different materials and we can shift and space click to fly and place the hoppers. There we go and we're just going to create a line like this. The line could continue and you could expand this uh, basically indefinitely. What we want now is maybe get this around the corner and have our input chest on top of it. So everything that we put in here will go towards our system. So let's place them right here and maybe have some uh, dummy materials. We're going to place some of those guys and see if they actually get to our chests. Now all my programmed hoppers are filled up which means they should be going directly in the chest. We have some lapis lazuli, some sand and uh, some stone should be following soon. There we go. Now everything else that we haven't sorted out such as coal and gold ore are gonna go further towards uh, this direction and should be landing in this chest. Perfect. That means we are ready to build our furnace system now. Great, so I decided for a location for my furnace and chest. The way we get the cooked materials or smelted materials out of there is very simple using a hopper like this. It doesn't need to be influenced with redstone in any way. It will only pick the items from here. What we also need to do is put everything that we want to smelt in the top just like that. And this is where we are going to go with this line. So we are going to bring this all the way up and over just like that. Make sure that they are all facing in the right direction. So right now everything that isn't sorted out would be going into the smelting slot of the furnace. But we also want the coal to go in from any side of the furnace. I'm gonna choose the back side. So it's gonna go in right here, the coal. What we need to do is take this item hopper for instance as a reference to make another of those modules. So we are gonna sort out the coal. I'm going to make something like that, which means we could place our comparator prob probably right here with our item hopper, just like that. And then we are going to finish the module, just as we know it, with a piece of redstone right here, and a repeater, and don't forget the torch, just like that. And this, of course, should be facing like so, and so. And now you can see that this line here interacts with the backside and this line interacts with all the other materials. Very easy. 
Now there's one more problem with this system. If the coal actually eventually fills up, it will jam our system and break it. So we need to take care of the excess coal. The way we do that is with signal strength again. So we learned that a signal strength of 2 means about 18 items in the first slot and the rest filled up with one item. Now if we exceed this number, that can only mean that the rest of the line is actually filled up. So in case all of these hoppers are filled up, only then we can reach a higher s signal strength because more items will be gathering up in the coal slot here. That means we can have a signal strength of, of 3 to the side that it is time to put coal into our excess system. Now to make this happen we want to pull out the excess coal of this item hopper. We are going to place an item hopper below it, just like that, facing into this direction. And this is the direction of my uh, excess chest that we can simply, for instance, place right here. And it's going to go towards this chest. Just like that. Simple as that. As it is right now, this item hopper is stealing the coal from this one before we even have uh, an excess amount of coal. So we need to avoid that. And we do that with the three long block signal that we require. So only if this item hopper here has a large amount of coal in there, this one should be active. So let's create the three long signal. We're gonna go down just like that. So we already have one, two, three. And that's all we need to do. Place a torch to invert the signal. And we can place a piece of redstone. And since it is a dot and not a line, we can actually power this block. Which means this item hopper now is off by default. And only if we have so many items that it actually can make a three long signal, it will go towards the excess chest and steal the coal from this hopper. Which again means that the coal that has been gathering up in here can follow. Pretty cool. Alright, this has been it for the building part of the system. There's one more thing I want to stress. You really need to be careful that you have sorted out everything that you put in this chest because everything else is going towards the furnace system if you build it like this. Of course, you could also set it up that uh, different materials go into different furnaces, but that's just uh, the way I've done it, that everything is cooked up in the same furnace and just will be queued up. Since this is an exact copy of the contraption I showcased in the beginning of this video, I'm not going to do that again. Just trust me, it works out. It requires a bunch of stacks of coal and stuff to get started, but once you have the system uh, filled up, it does a very great job. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any suggestions for uh, tutorials you want me to do, also leave them down in the comments. And also take yourself a second to thumbs up this video. Thank you so much. Have a great time and see you soon. <laughs>